Each day, we all use acronyms to communicate faster. So why not use the same method in code? That's where mnemonics come in handy. In C Sharp, you've probably been using mnemonics without even noticing because they are already built in. Like creating a class, property, constructor, loops, printing a line, and that's just scratching the surface. But let's dive into the real power of mnemonics, which is that we can add any custom mnemonic we want. In Writer, this is possible in the Settings window, under the Live Templates tab, where all the mnemonic templates are defined for us, such as creating the for loop we saw earlier. The basic idea of a template is pretty simple. On the left, we've got the code snippet that will be written automatically. Notice that the values that will be completed by the programmer are wrapped with dollar signs. Also, we can define where the cursor will stand using the keyword end, which also gets wrapped in dollars. And we'll get to the selection keyword later. And on the right side, define the shortcut we want and give a short description of what it does. So let's go ahead and create our first live template. We'll start with a simple one that automatically writes a dictionary. We'll click on the new template button, fill in the text for creating a dictionary, giving the programmer the option to choose its name and values. We'll assign an intuitive shortcut, a short description, and save. And how cool! The template works just as we expected. But we can even upgrade it further. Why not automatically fill in the dictionary's name according to its types? Let's return to the template we created and split the name variable into two. We'll click on Edit Variables, and a window will open showing all the variables we wrapped in dollars. We'll select Name 1, then click on Change Macro. Here, we can choose for it an automatic value. We won't go over all the options here because it's beyond the scope of this video, but feel free to explore on your own. So we'll continue down and choose that the value that will appear is another variable with the first letter in uppercase. And we'll decide that this other variable will be var1. That way, the value entered into var1 will automatically be inserted into name1. Just make sure to mark it as non-editable because we don't want the programmer to have the option to change it. And we'll do the same for name2. And for those who like to specify the object type, we'll add dict to the end of the name. And now, it also automatically completes the name for us. Nice! Not only did we save writing code, but we also enforce the project's coding standards. In the same concept, we can create a to-do with an automatic description. And here's how the template looks and its variables, which give us information about the date and the user. Or perhaps a convenient debug to the console that prints the class name, method name, and line number. And here's the template and the variables, which give us information about the class name, method name, and line number. But that's not all. Mnemonics can also prevent us from making technical mistakes in code. Who among us hasn't created an event listener and forgot to remove it? So, we added a template that automatically adds and removes a listener from an event. No more forgetting. And this is how it looks. Another useful trick we haven't covered yet is creating a surround type of live template. For example, if we mark a field and then type cast, it will automatically surround what we've marked with casting. Or if we type if, it will wrap our selection with an if statement. So let's upgrade the debug we showed earlier to support surround, so we can apply it to a selected parameter. All we need to do is choose where to insert the selection we made with the keyword selection. And under use in, choose both so that it supports with and without surround. And we'll format the string with dollars for style. And now we can directly print a selected parameter. And since we chose both earlier, if we run the debug without selecting anything, it will still work as usual. Another practical example is checking how long a code snippet takes. Just select it and use the mnemonic performance. And this is how we created it. For this one, we used a macro of type list of values. Now, before you rush to add mnemonics yourself, there's already a writer plugin dedicated to C Sharp that contains many mnemonics and makes life easier. So we placed a link to it and to all the examples we showed in this video in the description below. So in summary, mnemonics are shortcuts for templates that simply save us time, prevent mistakes, and help us enforce the project's conventions.
Enjoyed the video? Share it with your friends and show us that love with a thumbs up and subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching. We hope to see you soon in another Practic API video.